Risk of Rain is a pixelated action roguelike that probably also counts as a platformer. Or maybe it's an action platformer that counts as a roguelike pixel? I don't know. The game is about a space train that crash lands on an alien planet, forcing its survivors to fight the environment and the creatures of the planet in order to find the wreckage of their ship to return home. But this video isn't about Risk of Rain. It's about a video game that came out after Risk of Rain. Risk of Rain 2 is a roguelike third-person shooter about a group of mercenaries tasked with responding to the distress signal sent from the space train that crash landed on an alien planet. But this video isn't about Risk of Rain Gunfire Reborn is a roguelike first-person shooter where you play as one of several recently escaped animals from the Central Park Zoo. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Guess the cat's out of the bag oh, now. Brother, this guy stinks! Uh, uh, Bird up! <laughs> Anyways, there's this big dumb bear trying to recreate that one disaster movie from the early 2000s. Yeah, that's the one. To stop him, you'll have to use the power of friendship, your innate skills, and an incredibly vast arsenal of firearms. There are small guns, big guns, bigger guns, and brick. If that's not enough, you can drink from the golden goblet of the gods to increase your inner power and read from the Elder Scrolls to grant outer power. Make your way through the underground catacombs and trek across the sandy dunes before wading through the stormy coasts on the way to the foot of the mountainous hyper 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 what the fuck hyperborean jokul, where the king of the north awaits your challenge. These locales are swarming with enemies that drop copper pieces when killed. Hey, that's extremely convenient because this is precisely the kind of currency that you'll need to fund your adventures. Capitalism survives and will continue to thrive even after the day after tomorrow. Occasionally, enemies will also drop other things like weapons and scrolls for you to use. And there are elite enemies and bosses and this thing. But we're getting way too ahead of ourselves here. Let's wind it back up. This is the inn. It serves as the hub world slash main menu for the game. It is here where you will gather a team together and prepare for your next adventure into the outside world. Getting into a multiplayer game with some friends is as easy as it can be through Steam, which is a lot more than I can say about at least one of the games that I mentioned earlier. There are 10 characters to choose from, each with their own set of health, shield, and speed values in addition to having their own unique primary and secondary skill. Once you select your character, you're ready to embark on your first journey. You're given this shoddy pistol to start out with and immediately begin to wonder where the actual weapons are. Well, there are two main ways to get weapons. Random drops and the peddler. The peddler sells ammo, secondary skill uses, and health in addition to these weapons. And he can also sell you scrolls if you have the correct talent, but we'll talk about that later. Once you have a weapon you want, or maybe one that you don't, you can upgrade it to increase its damage at the Craftsman, and later on you can add additional passive bonuses in the form of inscriptions as well. Once again, we will get to that later. The thing is, the Peddler and Craftsman aren't always guaranteed to appear on each stage, and they aren't the only random occurrences you'll encounter either. Golden chests have a random chance to appear in each stage, and these peculiar chests typically give you a trade offer. Give the chest something in return for a different thing. Typically something like money for a scroll, or a scroll for weapon buffs, or anything like that. Conversely, vaults usually always spawn in each stage, but there's a small chance that they just won't. They appear as glowing cracks against the wall, with each stage causing the crack to glow a different color. After unlocking the early talent, again we'll get to that later, shooting the crack will cause a portal to appear. This portal takes you to a separate mini-level that either contains a big fight, or a platforming section, or other mini-games that will reward at least one scroll upon completion. With these four things together, there's plenty of motivation to keep an eye out while you're fighting your way through the horde of monsters standing between you and the Coca-Cola Bear. Upon clearing the stage, you'll get the chance to drink from the Golden Goblet. This gives you the choice of three character-specific bonuses that reinforces one of the three pillars that define the character. These bonuses oftentimes end up reinforcing a specific playstyle, so it's a good thing that you get your choice of three. Each act is capped with a boss encounter, most of which are coin flips between two options. These fights are grand battles against creatures that boast size and potential for damage several times your own. You know, kinda like a boss does. In a classic boss fight fashion, taking down these lads requires timing, skill, and knowledge. The knowledge that you most likely don't have your first try, so it's only expected that you... die. 
Yeah, it's a roguelike, you're gonna die a lot. This game is kinda hard. By default, your character isn't the fastest thing in the world, so avoiding damage is more of a dance of timing your dashes properly, or just standing behind stuff. This is made much more important during boss fights, where you're presented with giant hit zones that are just the perfect size and appear with just the right amount of time to allow you to dash out of the damage if you time it right. At higher difficulties, the numbers are cranked, yes, but oh? What's that? Mechanical differences between the difficulties, you say? Sign me up! With more enemies of more varying types and more deadly events and event structure, the game gets pretty punishing. Often, one misstep can spell the end of your run, even really early in the game, but that's what makes it fun. Yeah, you die, but you also learn, unless you're incapable of doing so, in which case, I'm sorry. Anyways, after you die, you're taken to this screen. Oh look, it's those talent things I was talking about earlier. See, throughout your run, you hopefully will also pick up some of these teal coins. These are called Soul Essence, and for right now, their primary use is not to revive yourself if you die, that's a waste of money. You should instead use these coins to purchase talents from this here talent tree. The larger section here is universal to all characters, and the smaller section over here is unique to each character. Personally, I recommend grabbing the vault talent first, and then filling out these two trees and then the talents of your favorite character as soon as you can, but that's just me. You do what you want. This is the kind of thing that technically makes this game a roguelite, and not a true roguelike, but like, I'm not a nerd, so I don't really care that much. There are 10 characters in this game, and in an environment where each character is good at some things and bad at others, you need to know who you can pick to fit how you want to play. So here's a rundown on each of the 10 characters in Gunfire Reborn. This crown prince, he's a bit of a masochist, super straightforward and all-rounder, you can't miss. Smoke grenades and the orb, brings decays and discord. I drive a Ford and Lord, it's more expensive than it really needs to be. There's elemental damage, slows and stunts for you and me. Who let the dogs out? He's on the field, shout. Two guns out, no slouch, empty your pouch, watch your mouth. The mad bomber has a rocket launcher. Take a couple hits and shake it off like dog chill. Like Ice Cube, it's Friday and May Day, we go cray with a cachet of Independence Day. <laughs> oh, that's so sick. This is the problem. I just take a bit and run with it instead of getting over it. Kind of like better Fondy. Anyway, let's get back into it, shall we? Big bird up to bad shield. No need for that armored flying missile kick. It closes in and makes him sick. I got a shoddy. I'm making Swiss bodies. Leaping, kicking, swiping blades like I know karate. No bombs. Just a slap that stack and whack to attack. Many max in one smack. This one's a bigger cat. And he's got a different hat. Rearrange a cranium from a long range with a gat. I'm fragile. And it only gets worse. I take more damage to get one big burst. A single shot, that's all I need. Crits I feed like lightning hands. I power up to kill the weeds. Death from afar, power like a czar. What's my next bar? I need a new car. No, like seriously, I'm tired of paying for this car. It's expensive. I need a different one. Rabbit out of hat, rapid fire auto gat, summon swords and more and more, I mail them where the bullets at. No swinging, that's Virgil singing, and I'm bringing rapid fire, faster shooting, faster summons, faster you retire. Compact guns for the compact one, the kiss of death and metal pedals, you'll never ever see the sun. The turtle with a gat, and I can't find the rat, splinter cells, not the game for this cat. He doesn't die, he's immortal, shield made of water, you thought he was war turtle. He blocks attacks, but only from the front, so turn around, throw a fist. Break a nose and slap a can't say that. Close quarters is the game, so don't be lame. Drop the range and dish out the pain. Here comes the monkey, he costs real money. Wukong sends clones to do dirty laundry. Take power, then your life, you'll be remembered fondly. Too bad you're just a dot in the sundry. Firefox, I'm not browsing. Protect your housing, I cannot be contained with the light dowsing. I got heat for a quick attack. Burn a hole like back tax. Fire to everything. Pyromaniac. Red Panda, the chicken and the robot. Oh, I forgot I'm on the spot, sitting on a cot. Iron Wing, you're dying, king. It's a good thing your chicken can revive you. Bring. Pistols and crits, shoulder mounted rockets, shoot your best friend to heal him out the pocket. Finally, it's the Ao, name Zhao from Yugi Yao. Like, holy cow, this character's confusing and also quite amusing. Mash the cards and boom, quite a bruising. This one's all about luck 
and I'm a duck. No suck. Shadow wizard money gang casting spells for a buck. I do like it. I mean, I like it now. Now that I've gone through it like three times. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. This video game is good, but why? Well, for me, it scratches that itch of a first-person shooter while providing enough random elements to keep my simple mind occupied and waiting for the next run to throw something similar but slightly different at me. In true roguelike fashion, there are many weapons with many different inscription combinations, and I can find any of the more than 150 scrolls in the game, and then I have to worry about the goblet combinations. There's just so much variance, it creates a very roll with the punches vibe that I now realize describes every single roguelike ever released. Huh. But let's not worry about that right now. One of my favorite things is thinking about a silly thing that might be possible as I go. So many of the scrolls and ascensions work well with each other that it's almost impossible to finish a run without going, wait, does that work? That's funny. Or, you know, whatever your personal equivalent of that phrase would be. For example, at the hardest difficulty, you gain the ability to spend soul essence on extremely strong bonuses and enhanced versions of scrolls and weapons in exchange for the difficulty being, well, difficult. One of these bonuses belongs to the dog, and it allows him to have a small chance to throw every single grenade he has at once, while only consuming one grenade. One of my favorite runs I've ever done was the first time I grabbed this and a scroll that doubled my available grenades, loaded up on grenade and explosive damage, and then doubled my capacity again. And finally, I found another bonus that caused me to throw two grenades at once. And so as a result, I ended up throwing almost 50 grenades at the final boss all at the same time and killed him instantly. There are so many different varieties of gun that all feel uniquely distinct from one another, even within weapon classes. This game comes with some of the most fun and inspired weapon designs I've seen in quite some time. Consider the brick. I mean, it's a brick. The great part about the brick is that it's designed to be used precisely. See, when you manage to score a critical hit with the brick, a star falls, and when you pick up the star, your next attack with the brick does a bajillion more damage. Such a silly concept is executed so very well that you can't help but laugh at the existence of a fucking brick in this game, and then at the same time, it's a very strong weapon capable of dealing out damage comparable to the piercing flame rifle. There's also a pocket sundial that does damage by contracting and expanding a ring around your character. There's a hand shotgun that's also a buzzsaw, there's an ice spear that floats where it lands that you can recall to deal damage on the way back, we've got kunai that bounce, kunai that explode, kunai that you control with your, your mind. mind. There's melee weapons, lizards, needles, power gloves, and bow and arrows. There's a weapon to suit everyone's needs, and they're all fun as hell to use. As a final thought, I'll say that I didn't start by loving this game. When I first played this game, it was really only to hold me over until the next Risk of Rain 2 update. And for a while, that's the role Gunfire served, playing second fiddle to my favorite roguelike of the time. Gunfire was nothing more than a benchwarmer for the true king of my Steam library. Then, sometime down the line, I revisited the game after its official 1.0 release, and I found a neglected gem of a game just waiting for me to discover it for the second time. While I was having fun in my main roguelike, the developers of Gunfire were hard at work making their game the best it could be. And after plenty of early access development, two free updates, two character drops of two characters each, and nearly 100 hours of gameplay, I can say that this game is pretty damn good. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. I'm pretty sure this is the part where I ask you to subscribe if you like the video and leave me a comment if you want to see me do more stuff like this. I've got something big that I actually want to finish this time, so you might not see me for a while, but when is that ever not the case? In all seriousness, I do appreciate the love I've been getting on the past couple of videos and I kind of feel bad for not being able to like individually respond and reply to everybody that's been sending me, you know, good comments and all that kind of stuff. I just get really overwhelmed with all that kind of stuff, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, uh, yeah, I very much appreciate it. Please don't think that I don't. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, whatever. I'll make something out of it.
That's fine.